The great question uh, of uh, ethics is um, what is good for such an agent uh, as uh, ourselves? And uh, to say that it's uh, virtue might seem simply a kind of pious uh, remark at first, but of course now we, having uh, uh, followed this analysis, this function analysis, uh, as we're calling it, that we find in Aristotle, and we see how it complements, though it's not identical, with the uh, distinction that Thomas uh, made between human acts and the acts of man, we're able to see that virtue is simply performing well a certain function. It's the excellence of the function or the arete. So it, uh, it uh, follows as night the day that the acquisition of virtue uh, is the acquisition of the capacity to perform good acts. Uh, and it is that then in virtue of which we are, in virtue of which, thanks to which we are going to be called uh, good. But there are many of them. There are many of them. And that raises the question, how many of them do we have to have in order to be uh, a, a good person? Uh, or is it sufficient just to have one and say, well, I'm good uh, because I have this virtue. Uh, it's the perfection of rational activity. Rational activity is the characteristic activity of human being, ergo, etc. I'm a nice guy. Huh? Well, uh, as we know, that isn't going to be sufficient. And uh, particularly, as in the case that I was hinting at a moment ago, uh, where we think of someone who has a great deal of uh, knowledge, uh, that knowledge can be put to a very uh, sometimes damaging uh, purpose uh, by, by such a one. Uh, let, just imagine if, uh, if we found that uh, a scientist comes out of his uh, laboratory, face aglow, uh, hair all um, mussed up and so forth, and uh, with burning gaze tells us, I've found a cure for cancer. Well, we're delighted. And uh, we, we're sure he's going to get the Nobel Prize and so on. And uh, we go into his lab with him and uh, to uh, get further information about this great discovery, and we hear kind of snuffling and snarling and, uh, and edgy action around us, and we, we realize that the uh, lab is filled with cages, and we look in them and there are people in them. Huh? Uh, and we realize that uh, this man has been using uh, human subjects uh, as a lab animal. And now we begin to, uh, to alter our view about this fellow. We were so proud of him and congratulating him and so forth. And now we're, we're, we're really appalled by uh, what he has done. So the question that arises is, is he less of a scientist uh, uh, for... Uh, having degraded human beings in the way in which uh, he has? Or is this some defect beyond uh, scientific knowledge as such? Uh, a complicated uh, subject. But it is possible for us to say that somebody could be a good geometer and a bad man. Somebody could be a good scientist and a bad man. Uh, so that the virtues, uh, thanks to which, uh, one is a good scientist, and by that, what do we mean? Excellence in the use of his mind as bearing upon certain objects of pursuit or inquiry. That's what we mean by an intellectual virtue. So anyone who is a scientist, who has a habit uh, of knowledge in a particular area, geometry, microbiology, whatever, astronomy, uh, would have an intellectual virtue. Uh, uh, and yet, what uh, the example, the somewhat far-fetched example, let's hope, uh, that I've just put before you would indicate is that that virtue is compatible with bad choices, bad decisions, bad moral action. So what we, what we begin to, uh, to discern uh, uh, is this, that unless these intellectual virtues uh, are part of a good life, that is, unless they are not only skills acquired but are directed uh, to the overall good uh, of the human being, which again we realize is not just the good of that individual as an individual, uh, then they are, this is an immoral use of the knowledge. But this needn't lead us to deny that the person has the knowledge and has the, has the intellectual virtue. So some virtues uh, clearly are not uh, anywhere near sufficient for us say, saying of someone that he is a good man. Uh, there we would tend to, to qualify and say he's a good scientist or he's a good geometer, just as we would say he's a good golfer or a good uh, cameraman. But that doesn't lead to our saying, therefore, he is a good man without qualification. What, what makes one to be a good person uh, without uh, 
qualification that is in the full and absolute sense is if one's will is oriented to the true good of the human being. And that is something that uh, is, uh, is assured to the degree that it can be assured in this life by habits which direct appetite to follow the guidance of reason, practical reason, uh, as to uh, the good.